6.30 p.m. here in the Bolshoi Cell of the Tchaikovsky um, um, comp during the Tchaikovsky competition. Uh, this is the Gazette, our daily rendezvous. Today, Irina and myself are very proud to welcome Mr. Martin Engstrom. He is not a famous pianist, but he's very, very famous in the industry since, thanks to him, we've discovered a lot of pianists, singers, uh, whatever, violinists, you know. He started uh, uh, his career a long time ago in the 70s, and he's very well known for having been the artistic director of Deutsche Grammophon and also to have created uh, the Festival de Verbier in Switzerland, which has showcased and still showcases, you know, the upcoming and young talents on top of uh, more famous and renowned players uh, from the past 50 years. Дорогие друзья, мы продолжаем серию прямых включений из Большого зала Московской консерватории, с 15-го международного конкурса имени Чайковского. Мы с вами присутствуем на состязании пианистов. 6 часов 30 минут по московскому времени. И сейчас в эфире наша традиционная газета «Дневник конкурса имени Чайковского». Мы с Эриком очень рады приветствовать здесь, в нашей импровизированной студии, одного из членов жюри конкурса пианистов, человека, которого мы прекрасно знаем по музыкальной индустрии, человек, который открыл миру именно величайших исполнителей, человек, который долгое время стоял во главе компании Deutsche Grammophon, человек, который организовал фестиваль вот уже более 20 лет с успехом, происходящий в Вербье в Швейцарии, это Мартин Энгстрем. Мистер Энгстрем, мы очень рады, что вы здесь с нами сегодня. Спасибо. И, как я знаю, это не первый раз в Чайковской конкурсе, вы делали предыдущую конкурсу, но с виолином. Виолин, да, в Санкт-Петербурге. It uh, was very interesting. Unfortunately, the level of violinists, I think also this year, is not as high as the pianists, so oh, really? I think I'm having a better time here. Oh, okay. uh, в прошло, на прошлом конкурсе Чайковского мистер Энгстрем также присутствовал, но это было, он был в Санкт-Петербурге в составе uh, скрипичного жюри. Как он сейчас сказал, наверное, скрипачи на этом конкурсе не так сильны, как пианисты, поэтому он счастлив быть вместе с пианистами. You just said something very interesting because I've actually noticed that, you know, the industry, I mean, at least the record industry, hasn't produced a big violinist, you know, I mean, uh, in the past uh, 20 years, as many, uh, as much as pianists. Uh, I mean, how many, you know, Julia Fischer, Julia Fischer uh, of course. who else? Uh, Gil Shaham, okay, but that's... Patricia Kopachinska. Yeah, well, if you think she's a great violinist. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway... Who else? Uh, <laughs> Well, there are a couple of uh, Wilde Frank, uh, Norwegian. Wilde well, Frank is very good, and yeah, absolutely. Lisa to Bastard, to really EMI. Have some, some wonderful young violinists, but few of them. Not, yeah, very few uh, of them. How come? Well, I think it's cyclic. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time where there are hardly any young cellists, mm -hmm. and there are some fantastic cellists today. Mm -hmm. We see some of them in the um, competition here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Edgar Moreau is here, right? Uh, he won. He won second prize last time. All right, all right. But you have some wonderful ones uh, this time too. So, um, uh, and with the pianist, uh, the level is really extraordinary high. Mm -hmm. I've been to quite a few competitions, and I would say, in average, this is the highest I have uh, experienced. The highest, uh, the highest yeah. level of the mm -hmm. Do you think it has something to do with the example of Lang Lang? Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, кажется, что за последнее время индустрия звукозаписи представила миру не так много uh, замечательных скрипачей, как, скажем, это происходит в мире пианистов. Ну, действительно, наверное, так, отвечает мистер Энгстрем, но дело в том, что, видимо, все это развивается циклически. Какое-то время назад uh, не было, скажем, блестящих пианистов, а сейчас uh, перед нами целая плеяда совершенно замечательных uh, музыкантов, как Эдгар Моро и многие-многие uh, другие. Ну, собственно, сейчас, uh, говорит мистер Энгстрем, я очень счастлив здесь присутствовать в конкурсе пианистов. И вообще это, пожалуй, самый высокий уровень пианистического мастерства, который я встречаю на конкурсах. So, I was asking you, do you think he has anything to do with the huge success of Lang Lang and uh, the fact that, you know, he's, uh, become a, he's become a sort of a pop star in the, of the I industry? Think, you know? I think every kid needs a sort of a role model. And um, Lang Lang has served as a fantastic role model for many uh, almost say millions of young Chinese pianists. Mm -hmm. So wh what's really strange is that there are not more Chinese living uh, pianists here in the, in the competition. 
But uh, no, I mean, there are lots of fantastic pianists everywhere at the moment. I don't think it necessarily has to do with Lang Lang, but just uh, that there are some very good teachers and uh, some very good material. Don't ask me why, but it is like that. Вы э, приложили много усилий к э, ну, раскрутке пианиста Ланг Ланга. Ну, на самом деле, может быть, и не столько Ланг Ланга, сколько дело в том, что сейчас действительно в мире огромное количество совершенно блестящих пианистов. И, в общем, не спрашивайте меня, почему так действительно э, происходит. Мистер Энгстром, когда вы на жюри борт компетиции, что вы searching for? I mean, you're looking for young artists, uh, talented artists, or to promote them after the competition? Or Well, I probably look at different things than the gentleman to the left and to the right of me who are also looking very much at the technical aspects, the, uh, the pianistic aspects, which of course I take into the consideration, but I'm looking more at the package. Uh, I'm interested who uh, from A to Z, really, how they come in on stage, how they present themselves, how mm -hmm. they communicate with the audience. Mm -hmm. Communication is a big part for me uh, because you have so many dead pianists, dead who, pianists. who play well, extremely what well, but who don't communicate, who, who look like they're having a, an absolutely miserable time. Uh, how, do you, how do you feel it that they're sort of close? Mm, you, well, you can see you it. Know, you can see it. You can see it and you can hear it. Okay. Uh, когда вы присутствуете на различных конкурсах, что вы прежде всего uh, ждете от пианистов и что вы сами ищете? Uh, ну, прежде всего, конечно же, я смотрю на реакцию uh, тех uh, музыкантов, с которыми вместе я нахожусь в составе жюри. Uh, конечно же, я обращаю внимание на пианистическое мастерство, на техническое мастерство, на музыкальность, но также, как люди ведут себя на сцене, как они умеют общаться с публикой, потому что это очень важный момент. Вы порой наблюдаете музыкантов, которые совершенно бесподобны в музыкальном техническом отношении, но совершенно мертвые с точки зрения их способности uh, коммуникации с публикой, а для меня это очень важно. Eric, are you yes, with us? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I was about to ask you, you know, you were a major figure of the record industry for many years, and you've left, uh, you've left basically Dutch Gramophone, and we didn't take any uh, position in another company or not created your own label. I mean, of course, you have you know, a festival that takes a lot of your time. Actually, the Festival de Verbier in Switzerland will start in uh, less than uh, 20 days, I think, very soon. Uh, and we'll have a lot of uh, fantastic musicians uh, this edition again. But uh, <laughs> do you think that the record industry, you know, is sort of, uh, you know, lost, dead, uh, lost to marketing, uh, you know, to uh, globalization, to... Uh... No, I, I think the record will continue to exist. I'm sure in terms of uh, amount, there are more records produced today than there were uh, 20, 30 years ago, because there's so many labels and uh, even you could produce a, a, a CD. We could all produce a CD. So there are lots of CDs produced. Of course, the, um, what costs is the, the marketing and not very much is done, but I I still, perhaps I'm a little bit old-fashioned, but I, I still like um, a CD. I listen to CDs. I, I get lots of Not CDs. Not download from internet, no. No, no. <laughs> I, I get lots of CDs, and I believe in the mean uh, still of... Uh, will it be a CD or will it be a different... Uh, format? Uh, format, but uh, I believe in that. And don't forget that many of um, the pianists performing today uh, mainly, the more famous they get, stay in capitals. Mm -hmm. And there are still lots of people living on this world uh, who don't live in a capital mm -hmm. and who likes to listen to music and mm -hmm. uh, who, which gives them pleasure. So I, I think that uh, the CD will, I hope the CD will continue. And uh, my time at Deutsche Grammophon was uh, very exciting. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Probably CDs will be transformed in some, I don't know, slow pieces of metal, you know, <laughs> just like flashcards. Well, the problem is, <laughs> not, is, not, is not that the, the support exists or not, it's people are still buying it. Apparently they don't want to buy it, you know, people are not interested in buying music anymore. They want it to be free, to be able to download it for free or to copy it or to watch it on streaming or that they're obviously yeah. not interested about, you know, well, what in buying music. What, happen what, what, record, what, what happened when I started there? My my title was Vice President of A&R, it's called Artists and Repertoire. Mm -hmm. And already at that time, 
the repertoire part became less interesting. Mm -hmm. So it was more focused on, uh, on the artist. So you bought the last record of uh, Bartoli or the last record of Anzefi Mutter or the last record of Polini. Not necessarily, uh, you didn't want to have another set of Beethoven symphonies or another set of sonatas. It was the artist and I still think it's very much uh, artist-driven today. Mm -hmm. So it's not about music, but it's about artists who Well, plays, you know, the performs. format of the CD is uh, hardly ever breaks. Mm -hmm. So once you have established your own library or discography, mm -hmm. you uh, you don't need another Beethoven symphony. You perhaps ah. buy a Furt Wengler or you perhaps... Uh, probably I'm a crazy one and, you know, I love to listen to Beethoven symphony, buy a Furt Wengler, buy Karajan, buy a Svetlana, well, buy, good you know... You. <laughs> good that you're still around, yeah. <laughs> Мистер uh, Энгстерм, как вы думаете, в наше время uh, испытывает ли ну, какое-то состояние кризиса звукозаписывающей компании? Потому что, в общем, все мы сейчас uh, хотим скачивать музыку из интернета, хотим получать ее uh, бесплатно и так далее, и так далее. Есть ли здесь какой-то кризис? Ну, на самом деле, отвечает Мартин Экстрем, uh, я убежден, может быть, я несколько старомодный в этом плане человек, но я люблю слушать CD, я уверен, что огромное количество людей любят слушать диски, любят слушать записи, поэтому, собственно, эта сторона нашей жизни uh, все равно будет uh, продолжать оставаться оставаться востребованным. Единственный момент, который отметил э, мистер Энгстрем, это что покупатели скорее ориентируются на исполнителя, нежели на ту музыку, которая записана на CD. Но так или иначе, в общем, все охотятся за последним альбомом Чичили Бартоли или последним релизом Анны Софи Мутер или Юлии Фишер, чем, скажем, э, за несколькими интерпретациями музыки какого-то одного композитора. Um, you've heard a lot of uh, kids here. Some of them didn't even make it to the second round of the competition. Uh, could you tell us if you plan to hire any of them in the uh, next uh, season, the oh. uh, next uh, edition of Good the Verbia question. Festival, Good for question. instance? Uh, definitely. There are yes. some uh, interesting uh, personalities. It's when you listen in a, in a row like this, you, you find lots of things which uh, is interesting. You find lots of things which is uh, could even be out of the ordinary. It's seldom now that it all comes together in one person. So you hear something here, you hear something here. But I think uh, we definitely have a, a potential winner, and I won't tell you who. No, please but, don't. <laughs> uh, but there are definitely some very interesting personalities. Now, are you trying to tell me that you're only going to hire the winner? You're not interested in other people than just the winner? Or because you know you need the winner to sell tickets? No, or, no, no, it has. No, luckily, I don't have to. Uh, you have a lot enough subscribers. Make, subscribers. I don't have to make any excuses for my decisions because yeah. I decide myself who sure. I invite and where I be. But um, there are lots of young people here who have even been to Verbier to the academies. Already, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We, we, mm. Quite a few of them, and uh, also in the in the cello and in the violin and. Some violinists will even perform in Verbia this summer who are competing yeah. now. So I, I like to help young people and I don't only give them one recital one day, but uh, they come back year after year. So it is, um, I'm, it really interests me. Мистер Энгстрем, вы здесь слышали огромное количество талантливых ребят и многих не пропустили во второй тур. Будете ли вы в дальнейших своих каких-то концертных проектах, ангажиментах обращаться, может быть, привлекать этих ребят, приглашать их на свои фестивали? Ну, на самом деле, ребята действительно очень талантливы, отвечает Мартин Энгстрем, и очень многие обладают определенными достоинствами. Но что касается победителя, я вам не скажу, кто это будет, но для меня лично я уже определил, кто для меня потенциал потенциальный победитель. Ну что ж, мы с Эриком не будем дальше спрашивать, кто это будет, все-таки сохраним интригу, потому что лично мы не знаем, кто, будем победи кто будет победителем жюри, как говорится, виднее. Мистер uh, Энгстрем, and how often you travel around the world, uh, you know, with the goal to pick up, to find some new young artists, to invite them, probably to promote them? Well, you know, nowadays you don't really have to travel around so much in the no. world because you have YouTube, you have uh, friends, Medici TV. Uh, Medici TV. Of course, you, you so know, just to combine a pleasure with your job. Festival <laughs> every year. Thank you. So, uh, I, um, 
but uh, I work very much with a tight network of mm -hmm. uh, people I trust mm -hmm. and um, I do travel a lot but um, it's lots of people are also coming to me lots of young people Without are any coming invitation. <laughs> no but are coming no. to the academy in in um, in Verbier so the level of the academy is almost uh, as high as here we have I know uh, I know uh, I've heard the recordings from this Verbier festival and I observed uh, this recording so yeah. Yeah, I know. So I sometimes just need to go across the street and listen oh. to people in the academy and very mm -hmm. be to to identify some young talents. Насколько часто вы путешествуете по миру в поисках молодых талантов? Ну, вы знаете, сейчас это совершенно необходимо, не, не необходимость, потому что uh, у вас есть YouTube, у вас есть Medici TV, и uh, на самом деле uh, совершенно блистательные музыканты приезжают на ежегодную летнюю академию в Вербье, то есть мне, в общем, достаточно буквально перейти на другую сторону улицы, чтобы послушать uh, будущие таланты и, как мне кажется, будущее музыкального мира. Talking about Dutch gramophone that uh, Mr. Engstrom uh, directed for so many years, uh, let me introduce you to, for those who don't know her yet, which I really doubt they exist, but you know, uh, to Yu Jia Wong, a fantastic Chinese pianist. Did you sign her? I had to sign her because uh, I invited the head of Dutch gramophone to the, to the Verbia Festival the moment she came, and he came and he signed her there. All right, so again, one more artist that was discovered by Mr. Martin Angstrom, thank you very much for coming here. Thank you. Stay with us to watch your protege. I mean, you know, she's a friend of yours, I guess. She's wonderful. She's a Truly wonderful wonderful. <laughs> Мартин uh, Энгстрем сейчас вместе с нами здесь в нашей студии, а у нас в эфире видео это Юджи Ванг. That was the uh, electrifying, spellbinding uh, Yu Jia Wong, who makes an international career absolutely uh, fabulous since she was signed to Dutch Gramophone. And um, Martin Engstrom, our guest, Engstrom, is, uh, you know, has, was very instrumental in uh, making uh, her uh, the famous artist that she is today. Uh, maybe uh, you can tell us how did you discover her and uh, 
I mean, how did you invite her to Verbier, where she was filmed here like about five years ago? And I think she comes every year. I think she's even coming next this year, right? Uh, the first one who spoke to me about her was her teacher, mm -hmm. uh, Gary Grafman, mm -hmm. who was In also the teacher. Yeah, who was also the teacher of Lang Lang. And when I was at Deutsche Grimfen, I, I signed Lang Lang to to um, the company. And um, Gary has always had some very interesting uh, pupils and uh, is a very cultured man. And uh, when he talked to me about Yuja, I, I trusted him and I invited her and uh, she came. Uh, I don't remember how old she was, but this was quite a few number of years ago. And um, since then she's been doing uh, I mean, amazingly well and uh, rightly so. Good advice. In all due time, how important it is, <laughs> you know. Uh, Юджи Ванг, впервые uh, меня с ней свел ее преподаватель, и вот я, на самом деле, когда впервые услышал, поняла, что это изумительная находка, mm -hmm. и, в общем, вот так вот ее карьера развивалась. Я очень счастлив, что она подписала uh, контракт с Deutsche Grammophon, потому что, собственно, uh, человек, uh, пианист, которого ждут абсолютно на всех музыкальных фестивалях во всем мире, ну, конечно же, uh, чрезвычайно талантливая пианистка. Tell me, uh, Mr. Engstrom, you were not destined to become an artistic director for classical music per se, right? My background is I was a uh, manager for many artists in Paris. Yes, but before During, that, I mean, as a kid. As a, kid. Ah, as a kid. Yeah. Uh, I started playing the piano, but luckily I stopped in time. <laughs> for us, you mean? Or for, for, for yourself, for, for myself, everybody? For, for the whole world. For the audience. For the because whole world. Okay. I would have ended up as a terrible piano teacher in the province somewhere. And, uh, but you study uh, history of music? I study yeah, history of yes. music, and I studied piano, piano also, but mm -hmm. in Stockholm, uh, where I was born. And, uh, but sometimes there are so many pianists one would like to suggest, please, don't continue, <laughs> stop, uh, because you know their lives will be miserable and uh, they will, uh, it's such a hard profession and they take so much out of you. So if you don't have it 100%, uh, I think the best advice would be to but, do uh, something else. Uh, but how you were brought to this world of art management? You know? uh, my father was a sculptor and my mother was a music producer, so I lived in a oh, very mother. artistic uh, <laughs> world and I always loved classical music since I was a little kid. Как вы? Я на самом деле училась игре на фортепиано, изучала историю музыки, но, в общем, добрые друзья вовремя сказали мне, что хватит играть на фортепиано, лучше заняться делом, которое действительно я, в общем, хорошо понимаю. И отец Мартина был скульптором, мама музыкальным продюсером, так что, собственно, классика и классическая музыка была с детства. Ну и решение стать музыкальным менеджером тоже пришло, в общем, как-то вполне естественно в жизнь Мартина Энгстрема. So maybe you can tell us about the highlights of the upcoming uh, Verbia Festival. Who, yes. who are the artists we shouldn't miss? Have you... A brain of Tchaikovsky competition, I know. Yes, <laughs> well, we still well, have ten have, minutes. Uh, well, lots of, it's a good year. It's, it's a, a good, good year? It's a very good year. So, and we're very fortunate to have James Levine oh. coming to Europe coming back, for the first yeah. time in eight years. He, yeah. uh, He's He'll be leading the academy or useful he's orchestra? Con he's conducting yeah. in the, the opening concert on the 17th mm -hmm. of July. We have uh, uh, Valery Gergiev, who's going to play the piano oh. for the first time really? in uh, 25 years in public. Oh. He's playing the uh, piano. He's going to play a uh, Mozart piano concerto for three pianos with Matsuyev when? and when? Uh, Daniel Trifonov on the 23rd of uh, 23rd. July. And he's on Medici also. So. 23 июля, дорогие друзья, мы все отправляемся с вами в Вербье, чтобы послушать Валерия Гергиева, который играет на рояле. Я первый тут отправляюсь. So, I mean, we have some wonderful conductors, Charles Dutois, Zubin Mehta, Jan Andrea Noseda, Manfred Honeck. We're doing uh, Matthias Passion with Thomas Krastov conducting. Oh. Thomas Krastov uh, conducting, yeah. wow. On the 24th of July, also live on Medici, so... Uh, Medici will be very uh, present in Verbi again. I think we have 25 concerts uh, live. I see. But do you have a, you know, a sort of concept for this year uh, edition of the festival? No, 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 the, no the theme. No. Yeah, oh, okay. excellent theme. <laughs> okay, just yeah. the best. The best. Just okay. the best. The best <laughs> so, like, music. the best yeah. is our 15th competition, Tchaikovsky competition here okay. in Moscow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, Mr. Engstrom, uh, we are happy that you are here with us these days of the competition. Uh, what would you, you know, like to wish our competitors? I know to win, to be a winner, but uh, apart from it. What do I like to wish them? Yeah. Uh, 
of course, much luck, good nerves. Um, what is especially good in this competition is that there is a musical godfather in the terms of Valery Gergiev, who will really take care of each of the winners, and sometimes even of the second and third prize. And this is absolutely unique. There is no other competition in the world who, who has such a figurehead as a leader. So um, having Gergiev sort of overlooking you and taking care of you means a lot. На самом деле можно пожелать, конечно же, сильных нервов, удачи, всяческой удачи нашим конкурсантам. Но самое главное, как кажется Мартин Экстрим, это то, что во главе этого конкурса стоит маэстро Валерий Гергиев. Валерий Гергиев, который заботится не только о победителе конкурса, но и о лауреатах других премий. И участие в этом конкурсе – это, в общем, на самом деле, хорошая возможность для музыкантов быть обеспеченным, ну, так скажем, на ближайшие годы музыкальной карьеры благодаря Валерию Бесу. Mr. Angstrom, before letting you uh, join your colleagues downstairs uh, from the jury to check out the last candidates of the evening, I'd like you to uh, watch a video with us of Yevgeny Kisin, who you know very well and who wonderful you've been invited. Piano, wonderful pianist. Absolutely, yeah. you've been invited many times uh, to Verbier. Uh, please uh, check out Yevgeny Kisin on Medici TV.